What's good ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What If Deku Was The Red X, a very popular character from the OG Teen Titan series who even though he didn't have a lot of screen time, people just universally loved him. He's kind of like Shisui from Naruto. He's just that one guy that is just so hard to not like, considering the fact that there's so much mystery behind the character, and not only that, but even Robin himself played Red X, which just made him so, so, so much cooler. That said though, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you guys go on to enjoy today's video, don't forget to do all that basic YouTube stuff, like liking the video, turning on those post notifications, and setting them to all so you don't miss part two. And also, y'all, there is a like on today's video. If you guys can hit 400 likes, I'll promise to drop part two of this video tomorrow. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. This video is going to be going under the assumption that All For One is the father of Izuku Midoriya. So do please remember that. Okay, so the way that this all is going to start off is just Inko and uh, Hisashi Midoriya, aka All For One, would meet. Now, this happens just like many normal couples. They end up dating, they end up falling in love, quote unquote. All For One, not really. Inko is the main one. And All For One ends up accidentally spilling his juice inside of Inko. So Inko now has to bear with a child and that child would be Izuku Midoriya. When all of this would be happening, all for one, once Zuku would end up growing up a little bit more, would end up finally having his encounter against All Might. The same encounter that would forever end up hindering him from using the full capabilities of one for all. So with that being the case, Izuku would eventually end up growing up alongside his mother Inko, and one day, Izuku would hear a scream at the kitchen. He then sees a man with a mask on, and Inko would be asking what in the world he's doing here, who he is, why he thinks he's coming into the house, and Hisashi, aka All For One, would reveal that he was one of the biggest mastermind villains, the one responsible for the close death of All Might. Izuku doesn't really hear any of this stuff, but ultimately he can pretty much just hear all for one getting slapped and Inko kicking him out of the house saying that she never wants to see him again. Tears would begin pouring from her face as she would stare at Izuku and Izuku would stare right back at her and she just looks at him and would say that she hates the look of his face like why does he look so much like him and Izuku would be confused because his whole life, Inko has loved the fact that Izuku looked just like his dad, but now she hates it. And Izuku would look at Inko with this just look of like, mom, like what's wrong? But Inko ultimately would like throw, throw like, uh, I don't know, like a pan at Izuku and would say, get away from me, you monster. As from here, Izuku would like be thrown aback. He's like, mom, like what are you? But Inko just kicks him out. She literally just says, get out of here. So izuku is just outside in the streets and he thinks to himself i'll just go to bakugo's house he makes his way there and after walking for about one hour he would find himself outside of the katsuki residence knocking on the door izuku would end up seeing bakugo there and he would tell bakugo everything about how he got kicked out and how his mom hates him now or something and bakugo would laugh saying that he's not in the mood for pranks leaving deku to just sit there outside and Wonder why his best friend, quote unquote, isn't helping him. So Izuku finally decides that he's not going to get helped. He finally realizes that nobody's going to be there for him. And so Izuku finally has to realize that he has to take matters into his own hands. Nobody's going to hold Izuku by the hand. So Izuku has to be the one responsible for his own saving. And so what does Izuku do? Izuku just makes his way towards an alleyway where there he finds some random food and he makes his way towards the street pretty much just begging for money. A bunch of people would feel bad for him and Izuku would survive for a couple of months on the streets, going from place to place and just honestly hopping around at different shelters for kids, but ultimately they all treat him terribly and he's far better off on the streets than he would be at the shelters. 
his quirklessness would make him a prime target. And seeing as all the kids are competing to try to get adopted by different families, they all brutally pick on him and put him down as much as possible. Anytime that a family would come in and show slight interest in Izuku, somebody would come in and say, oh, you don't want him. He's quirkless. And Izuku would honestly just have one of the roughest upbringings. This would lead Izuku towards becoming a little bit of a thief. And one day, Izuku would end up spotting some random bike. Like, it's this really cool looking bike. And it has this like X on it, right? And Izuku sees it and he's just in this random alleyway in Japan. And he rushes over towards it and decides that his best bet is to just steal these tires and make a run for it, right? So he decides to start taking one. And it'd be at this moment that some other man would end up coming in with the same idea and would push Deku to the ground telling him to get lost that he's going to be the one robbing this. As from here, he would begin trying to pick the lock and Izuku would say, what are you doing? You can't do that, you know? And, you know, he like lunges at this man, but this man punches Deku in the face, sending him flying to the ground. And suddenly we would have this older man make his presence known as he would ask the thief, the new thief, what his intentions are with his bike and to get his dirty, filthy paws off of it. The man would turn towards him and tell him that he doesn't want the problems to just let him take it or else he's going to die. And you know what Red X would say? He would say, you, you're going to kill me. From here, he would proceed to pretty much just like wave his hand and like do the come here motion, you know, as the guy would say, you asked for it. And using his super strength, he would throw a punch at the real Red X, but Red X would simply dodge it, slam him on the ground and shatter his arm by breaking it in three different places. The man would scream out loud, but Red X would simply stomp him in the head and tell him to be quiet. As from here, Izuku watching all of this go down would then get picked up by Red X as he would tell him that that, that that bruise looks a little gnarly, telling Izuku to come here with him. And so they get on Red X's bike and would make their way towards his like random lair. He puts a blindfold over Izuku telling him to not that he's not allowed to see anything. And so Izuku would make his way there where Red X would give him a bag of ice and Izuku would ask him if he could teach him how to fight like he just did. Red X would say that he's not in the market for being a hero or any of those stuff. His vigilante days are over anyways. So he's done with all that. And Izuku would say that life's hard as a, as a quirkless person. And, you know, it'd be at this moment that I'm actually going to be saying that it's Jason Todd. I'm going to be using Jason Todd as the Red X. And I'm going to say that he's in this universe and not Batman, but actually, eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we'll see if I'm going to throw in some little uh, Batman, you know, villain just to just to really spice up the pot a little bit, you know. But ultimately, Izuku, after questioning him, Jason would feel bad realizing that, you know, he can relate to this kid so much because he actually grew up quirkless as well. He was the only member of the Bat family not to have a quirk. So it was pretty hard on him. And Red X would ask Izuku what he's willing to do for power. Like, how hard is he willing to train? And Izuku would say that he's willing to do anything. After all, it's not like he can do anything other than train. He has no home and his mom already abandoned him. And Red X hearing that would remember his old life of crime. When he tried to steal the wheels off the Batmobile. So Red X realizes that this kid, he's just like him. And if he could train him properly, and he means properly, not like Batman did, and not make the same mistakes that Bruce did, then maybe, just maybe there might be hope for this kid. Just because he turned out a complete loser doesn't mean that anybody else has to. So what does he do? He pretty much just ends up telling the kid that it's now or never. The training starts now. As he begins to beat in a bunch of knowledge on martial arts and using the different weapons on the Red X costume. And eventually Izuku would just train and train and train and train and train and train and train until finally he reaches the age of 14. Now we know that Jason Todd ended up reaching phenomenal levels of like combat training under Batman. So we're going to be saying that a Jason Todd who has been training under Batman, who knows all the tips and tricks, who's friends with Nightwing, who's friends with all that other crazy stuff, would definitely know how to train somebody like Izuku. So what would pretty much end up going down is that Izuku ending up realizing that, you know, he doesn't really have like a lot of choices would have actually ended up getting like somewhat adopted by Jason. He never really like adopted him legally because he's not like Bruce, but he's kind of his son, if you get what I mean. Like he raised him, so he's his father. And just to let you guys know, 
Izuku has no idea that his father is all for one. Just for those of you that are like, wait, does he know? So yeah, he has no idea and he's been trained by Red X all of these years. He's now 14 years old and the only thing that Izuku would be thinking to himself is that he wants to be in UA. Izuku decides that what he's going to be basically doing is trying out for the entrance exam and Red X would advise him against it saying that Hero Society is terrible and that he'd be better off being some sort of vigilante. But Izuku goes behind his back and ends up taking the UA entrance exam all the while and ultimately Izuku would end up passing with flying colors. The written portion would be phenomenal and the combat portion Izuku would end up averaging 37 robot points without saving Uraraka like he would have in the original. Those like heroic senses have Loki been dimmed by all the training and hardcore lifestyle that he's had to endure alongside Jason. So ultimately the zero pointer was simply turned off by Nezu when he realized that a student was actually in grave danger. So essentially what ends up going down is that Izuku is happy, he's pretty proud of himself and he makes his way back towards Jason, with Jason saying that he knows where he was and Izuku saying he had to try, with Jason saying of course he did. And of course he went against his will, he was already expecting that. And Izuku would ask, so why didn't you stop me? And Jason just simply says that because he had to learn the hard way. So now, he's going to have to realize why he didn't want him to try out. And Izuku's just thinking to himself, like, whatever, like, bro, I got 37 points, like, I'm going to get into this school. But Jason would just be thinking to himself that he's not so sure about that. And ultimately, Izuku would finally end up receiving a letter from the mail saying that his scores were impressive. However, due to his quirkless status, they can't allow him into UA. And Izuku would, like, again, like for the thousandth time, feel the prejudice of people being, like, like, like people pushing him away just because he's quirkless. Izuku would smash the video on the ground, and he would think to himself that it's not fair. And Jason would say, that's why I never became a hero. As from here... He would go on to look at the direction of uh, of Jason and ask him if there's any training he can do now. Like he needs to blow off some steam. And Jason would end up sparring with Deku, ultimately leading Jason to finally feel like it's time. He ends up giving Izuku the Red X costume. And let's just say, 14 year old Izuku fills it in quite well. Pause! But no, yeah. 14 year old Izuku would definitely fill in this costume very phenomenally. And so... Izuku would pretty much have nothing else to do like his whole goal and motive and thing like that was pretty much just becoming the red x but now that that opportunity is completely gone and it doesn't look like he's going to be becoming that anytime soon he doesn't even know what he wants to do with his life anymore right like what does somebody do who has had their entire goals and dreams crushed by other people I mean what other choice does Izuku have he doesn't have many options but ultimately, Izuku decides that he's just going to take to vigilanteism. And so, for the following next couple of, uh, let's say, for the following next couple, for the following next couple weeks, Izuku would just continue his vigilante stuff, continuing to take down villains in the nighttime, and occasionally run into some heroes who would try to capture him, but it would all be in vain. Aizawa would be one of those who was major in trying to capture the Red X, but he'd be super confused because the Red X hasn't been around for years and suddenly he just came back. He fights exactly like the videos of old and they're completely unsure what happened. Like, did he get like rejuvenated or something? Like, what's up with this Red X guy? Does he have some sort of like younger core? Because he was active for like 30, 40 years until he finally quit during some incident when All Might and a bunch of heroes actually almost caught him. Luckily, able to use his teleportation, he was able to get out of there, but what are the chances that that would happen again, you know? He was almost caught. And so, Jason would end up pretty much telling Izuku that there's a high chance that he'll get caught one of these days, so to take it slow. Izuku ultimately decides that there's nothing, you know, he would rather do than to just keep taking on more villains because even though Izuku might not doing it by might not be doing it by the book, Izuku cares a lot about the well-being of society and he cares a lot about the well-being of random people. Izuku is a very like I care about a lot of people kind of guy and eventually Izuku would finally end up meeting the bat himself an old version of Bruce Wayne when Jason would decide to pop in and ask Bruce for a favor if he can potentially upgrade the red x sooner or suit or something like that and so Bruce using his new technology and all this crazy stuff would end up making the red x suit even more durable and even more lightweight and even more OP 
than the one in the original. The X's that he can throw, he has some that are capable of like shocking people. And he has some that are capable of just like, like stunning them for long enough to the point where they're like, they can't move. You know what I mean? He has like so many new things that like the Batman pretty much gives him access to. And he now gains like access to like being able to breathe underwater through his mask because like Batman adds that he also adds like warming into it. If he ever gets like into a cold area, you know what I mean? He, he upgrades the cloaking technology to make it even more broken than before. And he upgrades the teleportation range to just be completely broken. Also, the biggest and like, like most most like coolest thing that he does is pretty much actually train Izuku himself. For an entire 24 hours, Izuku and the bats would actually end up training by themselves privately, and Nightwing would stop by. Being an old man himself and actually retired by the by um by as as well, sorry, they would all end up kind of like catching up, and Jason would pretty much just be hyping up his prodigy and his new um his new student, Izuku Midoriya. Ultimately, though, the happy good go lucky times don't always last forever, and on this particular day that we're gonna be jumping to. It would be one of those days where things take a turn for the worst. Izuku would be out on his nightly patrol when suddenly he would end up seeing a random strange mist appear in front of him. Izuku would be confused. He's like, what is that, right? And then a man with white hair and hands all over his face would pop out. Izuku would immediately get into his combat position and Shigaraki would say in his raspy voice, So... You're Red X, the one I've been hearing so much about, Kurigiri, let's go. And Kurigiri ends up pretty much warping Izuku into the bar of the villains in the hideout, as Izuku would look around and would pretty much just like take off his mask saying, nice little spot you got here, so what'd you go through all the trouble of getting me here for? As Shigaraki would be shocked at the age of the infamous Red X as Shigaraki would say that he's not the original, is he? And Izuku would say, nah, he's better. From here, he would go over towards the bar area and ask Kurigir to whip him up a, a, a random drink, right? a tequila on the rocks or something like that, right? And so, you know, he would be given that, and Deku would take two shots and two more shots and three more shots, ultimately getting slightly buzzed and then looking at Kurigiri and saying, so what do we got to talk about? And Kurigiri would end up telling him that he's seen a lot of his work and it interests him. They're about to launch a fallout, um, a fallout um, plan to destroy All Might and Hero Society as it stands. No more will the weak be oppressed, or actually no, not the weak be oppressed, but no more will villains be outcasted and vigilantes made to be look like villains. With them, they can pave way for a new society, a better society. Shigaraki would say, he would then say that the strong would be on top and the weak would get crushed under his boot. And Izuku would like, like just get angry at the thought of that, saying that so the weak are just going to be put to the side and treated like nothing, like outcasts. And Shigaraki would say, exactly. As from here, Izuku would say he doesn't want a part of any of that, smashing one of the glasses on the ground before then saying he's leaving. And Shigaraki would say that, you know, if, if he wants to leave, he's not going to stop him. But if he leaves, they will for now on be enemies. And Izuku would laugh saying, trust me, the last person you want as an enemy is me. As from here, Shigaraki would grit his teeth at the thought of the fact that Izuku said that to him. And so Izuku would begin making his way back towards his own area. The last thing he hears was basically Shigaraki saying if he changes his mind, it'll happen in the USJ a couple days from now. And Izuku would just sigh as he thinks to himself that it's whatever, it is what it is. He's sure the heroes can handle it. But as more and more days would go by, Izuku wouldn't be able to get it out of his mind. And for some strange reason, Izuku just kind of feels compelled to help. He doesn't understand why. He's never been like this. But for some reason, that freaking school that rejected him, he just feels like saving it. He's just so angry at this. But... He doesn't know where he gets this righteous heart goody goody thing from, but he knows that if Batman was here, he probably would tell him to help even though he doesn't want to. Because sometimes as a man, you got to do things you don't want to do, right? And so Izuku would just decide that ultimately he's going to help. The day of the attack, Izuku would get all of his gear together and using the Red X bike, he would drive there. 
making his way there fast, like faster than you guys could even imagine. And then once there, he would teleport to the top of the USJ roof, looking around only to see that there's a boat with a bunch of like kids on there who were about to get ambushed by a bunch of villains. Red X, thinking fast, would quickly throw an X that could electrocute the water and conduct the electricity through it and would stun all the villains. Landing there on the boat and asking them if they're okay, Sue, you would say, you're Red X, aren't you? Like, like, like just, I, I think I just did the voice wrong. And then Mineta would be like, oh, you're uh, the Red X. Uh, such an honor to meet you. I've studied your, your work. And Izuku would look at him and say, dude, stop the stuttering. As from here, he would then end up telling them that they're on their own from now. And he would just jump all the way in the air, about to fall in the water. So you would be about to catch him with his tongue. But Izuku would teleport back onto the mainland and would see Aizawa would actually be struggling with a bunch of villains. Izuku would begin to get side by side with Aizawa and ask him if he needs a little help as he throws a punch and would knock out one of the villains. Aizawa would say that why is he here? Like he doesn't belong here. Like is he here trying to like play some games? Like is he here trying to kill the students as well? And Izuku would say that he's crazy for that. Izuku's not a villain. He's just a vigilante. That doesn't just because he doesn't do things by the book doesn't mean that he's evil. And so he would continue facing off against all these villains until Shigaraki would scratch at his neck and say, It's not fair. Nomu, kill him. Kurigiri would end up teleporting the Nomu in, and the Nomu would blitz at Izuku, throwing an insanely powerful punch, which Aizawa would use as cancellation of quirk ability on the Nomu, and Izuku would only be able to dodge because he can teleport out of the way. From here, Izuku would jump up into the air and throw a bunch of X's at the Nomu, which are supposed to paralyze him, right? But the Nomu just screeches, grabs them, and just throws them off of him, like screeching at Izuku as Shigaraki laughs and says, <laughs> You can't defeat the Nomu. It has been made to kill All Might. There's nothing you can do, Red X. Red X.